On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks get a clutch win. Christian Wood with some huge winning plays. We'll talk about him, how has he developed in this lineup, and then Luka Doncic puts the team on his back in the third quarter again. Off night, casual, 39-12-8. Talk about that and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks. Welcome to Mavericks. Believe it shouldn't be here. <laughs> and welcome here, Locked On to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. The best way you can help us grow the show is to comment anything below. Let us know what's something you uh, changed your mind about Christian Wood about. Maybe let's do that. Let us know in the comment section below. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Joining me, as always, my co host, writer, contributor at mavs.com, the Rockets Red Guy, the one more thinking. What you Rockets got for Red. me, Isaac Harris? Yeah. Uh, I want to give a quick, um, serious uh, prayer to uh, DeMar Hamlin. For as, sure. Uh, we're recording this pod right after the Bills, Bengals, uh, and Rockets Mavs game. And uh, we don't know any updates yet on that, but obviously Nick and myself are plugged into the sports world. It's part of our profession and uh, how we make money, support our families. And that is the biggest storyline in sports. And uh, we're both praying for him, his family, and all that situation. Yeah, my uh, my father-in-law and my two brother-in-laws were at the game in Cincy, and they sent me a picture of wow. just like the whole, the, both teams in the middle of the field with the, the ambulance literally pulled onto the field. It was just a wild scene there in Cincinnati for a game that was super hyped up, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's now all just about how what's the you know what's the status of Demar Hamlin? So yeah, so so definitely prayers up for him. Um, but the Dallas Mavericks played a game tonight, so we'll con- we'll talk about that, and we'll break down the Dallas Mavericks win. We'll break down Christian Wood. He had some incredible clutch plays, and I thought this was a real another like step forward for Christian Wood in his development with this team, the defense, and all that. Luca also had an incredible third quarter. Dinwiddie some clutch plays. Tim Hardaway had a clutch play too. We'll talk about yeah. that and more later. But let's get into Christian Wood because. In- <laughs> His game sort of was the way that this game, like this game sort of played out, right? First half, to his his own words, his defense was trash, right? Like <laughs> his own words post game, he said to Mark Paul, his defense was trash. I didn't think it was particularly good. He gets in foul trouble pretty early. Um, get you know, gets three fouls pretty quick, and a couple of them. He's got he's gotten these we- he's gotten a weird whistle over the last couple of games. It feels like he's getting called for weird fouls, and then all of a sudden he's in foul trouble. But he wasn't. You know, he was scoring. He had 12 points in the first half, a couple of fouls there. Uh, but the Mavericks just couldn't shoot anything. And then all of a sudden, second half, Luka takes over in the third quarter. And then Christian Wood plays maybe the best defensive game we've seen from him. If like if you're just going to take out the first half, like throw the first half out. <laughs> the second half from him was just one of the best defensive stretches we've seen from him this year. Yeah, I mean, obviously blocks don't tell the whole story. It's it's an easy defensive you know stat that and steals to look at and be like, hey, look at that. Yeah. But he had five blocks in this game, which huge. is huge. You know, he's been putting up a lot of blocks. You know, there's a lot of stats going around about how many uh, times he's had two plus blocks in, in a Mavs game over these over the stretch of games. And yeah, I mean, he, like you said, he joked about it post game that he was trash in the first half. I don't think it was but- a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was no. I think he was serious and I actually appreciate that he's critical of himself in that. You can tell the coaching staff is really drilled into his head defense, right? And he's like that's yeah. top of mind for him like hey, you know, I didn't I didn't fulfill my end of the bargain in the first half. Because, you know, and it shows a self-awareness from him right. that he knows that's where he struggles yeah. and he's been improving in that. And you know, the coaching staff, we all know how this has played out throughout the, the season. They didn't start him. They really just wanted to bring him off the bench to be the sixth man, and he did well in that role, and they wanted him to play with Maxi because Maxi could cover his defensive deficiencies or, you know, all that. And, you know, Maxi gets hurt. Injuries kind of force him into the starting lineup, and it's like he saw this opportunity, and it's like, hey, for me to, like, keep this spot and to stay in the starting lineup, I need to show them that I can be a passable defensive player. Yep. And he's showing that right now, that he is a passable defensive player. And, yeah, you have to give him all the all the praises with that. He is playing – I mean, he's playing his best basketball as a Maverick so far. You even just look at a specific play. 
Four minutes and 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Christian Wood gets that three. Shangun fouls him on the, on the three-point play. It ends up being a four-point play. And the Mavericks are down by one. Then you go back on the other end. Christian Wood has four fouls. So, like, he's close to getting in real foul trouble here. Four fouls. Goes one-on-one -on -one against Jalen Green. And Jalen Green sizes him up. You know, like, there's some history behind any Rockets matchup with Christian Wood one-on-one. -on -one. They want to take it to him every single time. And They talk so much smack to him <laughs> in all of these games. It's been, I'm so sick and tired of watching Rockets basketball. I'm so glad they we're done him, with them. <laughs> they played him three times over this stretch of seven games, and I'm just sick of watching that team. So shout out to Jackson Gatlin on that. Um, <laughs> also give Jackson Gatlin some love for his Luka tweet. He tweeted in the first half about <laughs> Luka forgetting how to play basketball. And uh, we'll talk about Luka we later on. Yeah, we should have warned him. We should have warned him. Luka off night will still drop 39 on you. But how the Rockets interacted with Christian Wood in all of these games, you can tell there's a little animosity uh even christian Wood, you can see him at the end of game uh, he was at the uh, free throw line you know uh, down on the block and he was like yelling at the bench i told you i told you and he's like <laughs> pointing at the scoreboard and stuff so uh they love talking their smack with him and so you know there's something behind that so so Jalen green gets christian wood one-on-one -on -one and he's like i'm going i'm going to the basket and christian wood can't foul in that situation the mavericks are it's it's a clutch situation and he blocks him. like He gets him into the mid-range, and Jalen Green kind of comes up for a floater, and Christian Wood blocks it. It was an incredible defensive play, I thought, and just one of those where I don't know if we'd seen a ton of like, all right, I can point to that right there and say that's good defense from a play like that. right? You can see you can see the numbers and the blocks and stuff. Over the last, what is it, his last 10 games he's played, he's 2.7 blocks a game. <laughs> that, that's crazy. Since, November, or since uh, December 16th, he's fourth in the NBA in blocks per game. <laughs> because he's getting that many and um but we hadn't had a ton of like moments where you say okay that's a great defensive moment and i felt like that one especially in a clutch situation was a really great defensive moment from him yeah i mean the whole sequence yeah and then he, you know he took a heat check three after that in the corner but it's like hey you kind of deserve it like you're playing you're hitting some shots there sure. you know so he finished the night with uh 21 points in the game he's 8 of 14 from the field hit three threes in the game um had seven boards. So, I mean, he played a pretty good pretty good game. Four assists. Yeah. Yeah. Four assists, too. So, it's huge. You know, I was worried about it in the first half because, obviously, Luca looked like he um, had a few recovery beers um, <laughs> in the first half. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was like, all right, we're not going to get a Luca 50-point game. Can we still win? <laughs> and, and that's the state of the Mavs right now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was like, "Can uh, Christian Wood or Dinwiddie come through and you know have have a big game?" And you know, it's not like he had thirty something points, but he at least put up twenty one and hit some big shots late. Dinwiddie hit a clutch shot late. Um, but yeah, for 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 Christian Wood, you know, I think a lot of fans, everybody's just watching the extension stuff. Yeah, you know, there's different national people are talking about it now. It's, it's this unique situation of we've talked about it multiple times on this podcast of what do the Mavericks do? What does Christian Woods camp want? Uh, we don't know that. You know, do they do they want something more than the four year max? Uh, are the Mavs even max offering extension it? that he can get? Yeah, which is at four for seventy seven. Uh, are the Mavs even offering it? Are the Mavs wanting something short term? Are you know is Christian Woods camp open to something short term? Like we don't know the answers to any of these questions yet. So, but that that's the situation everybody's watching right now. Christian, if you would, <laughs> I love that from Harp tonight. Christian, if you would, uh, the the unintentional Christian, if you would, uh, yeah, Christian Wood. I thought great game. It's one of those you look at the box score and you're like, oh, he had a couple of stats here and there, but he had a real, real impact on this game, scoring early when the Mavericks couldn't, you know, hitting a couple of threes, and uh, really having a big impact on this game. Coming up, let's talk about how the game was won. Luka Doncic took over in the third quarter. An off night for Luca. Jackson Gatlin may have learned this on Locked on Rockets. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy. It's made easy. You can pick two to five players and the over-under on their per their projections. Uh, you can pick more or less. So if you go and check out, they have NBA right now up. Uh, they have Celtics versus Thunder. Here we go. 30.5 30, 30 points more or less for Jason Tatum against the Thunder, Isaac. 30 how much? 30.5. Um, under go less than that. SGA 28.5 points, so 28 and a half over. Go the more on that one, you put down 20 bucks. I can win 60 if I add Jalen Brown to that. And let you go, let me go less than 26.5 on his. 
I put down 100 bucks on those three that I did. I can win 225 bucks. It's that easy. You can win up to 25 times your money on prize picks. Go check it out and go ahead and use the promo code locked on because you get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Use the promo code locked on, 100% deposit match up to $100. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. All right, Isaac Harris, thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen today. Now, now go check out the Lockdown NBA or Lockdown Sports Today shows. Incredible shows from across the network covering the NBA and more. Uh, all right, let's talk about this game because the Mavericks came down to the clutch. It shouldn't have. It's one of those games where you're like, can, can the Mavs just win comfortably like they did the other night? Um, the Mavs win 111 to 106. First quarter, 18 points. Now, the team has leaned all offense. Their defensive players are all injured. Dorian's still out. Maxi's still out. Josh Green's still out. JaVale is out this game. And you're like, okay, we can't go in against one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA and score 18 points in the first quarter. Yeah, that's what I was worried. So uh, <laughs> that's what I was worried in this game. Because, uh, you know, a lot of Lucas shots were were short. Even that, you know, last shot in the fourth. Yeah. Um, that he took kind of that step back contested shot, uh, mid-range shot. You know, that was short too. And I was like, all right. Um, maybe it, Luca's due for an off night. And if Luca has an off night sometime soon, like a legit off night, not like, not this <laughs> not type this of off game. night, like a 25 point or below <laughs> off night. Um, uh, it's okay, right? Like, it's okay for him because he, he kind of like deserves it a little bit. I'm tired <laughs> like, as hell. Yeah, he, he's put up so many, uh, so many points lately, but yeah, that, uh, I was officially worried in first, I mean, r- honestly, the whole first half I was worried. So, uh, to be honest. Yeah, it looked like one of those where, oh, is this going to be the Rockets just can't miss any shots? What, in the first half, they, I thought they were shooting really well, uh, and then the Mavericks just couldn't hit anything. It's one of those games where if the Mavericks can't hit threes, then nothing goes right, right? It's kind of the same thing we've been saying for this team for a while. Um, but then in the third quarter, like Luka Doncic just took over. Yeah, 19 points. He went to the free throw line 10 times, three assists. Uh, only took two threes, didn't hit either of them, but got to got in the paint. How many threes did he take total in this game? <laughs> he took, he took, uh, what nine? Ex- just exactly nine. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. You're sucking Explain with yourself. your Sorry. soundboard. Explain yourself. <laughs> he Isaac's been tracking the nine threes. If if Luka Doncic takes nine threes or less, the Mavericks win more often than not. And if he takes more, they usually lose this year. Yeah, it's not it's not a perfect stat, but it. It's tracking pretty well. And so Luka Doncic just takes over in the third quarter. It's one of those where it feels like the Mavericks are just waiting for that to happen because that's the way it's been for them. Like, hey, we'll just wait for we'll just wait around for Luka to just take over. Yeah, and the Rockets suck. So it's like, you know, my best <laughs> friend's from Houston. He texts me in the fourth, and he's like, how are we going to lose this game to y'all? Isaac, I'm not from Houston. That's true. Wow. <laughs> that sucks. Wow. Oh. One of my best friends. One of my best friends is wearing a Dallas Wings shirt right now. <laughs> um, oh, but he was like, well, how, how are the Rockets not going to win? And I was like, well. Friendship has been exposed on the podcast today. <laughs> that was a really sweet post you put on Twitter the other day, though. That warmed <laughs> my heart. <laughs> and yet here I am. Um, but I just told him, I was like, the Rockets are going for Wimby. That's why you, that's why you lose games. Right. That's the whole and y'all point. Are not, and y'all are not improving at all. According to Eric According Gordon. According to Eric Gordon, no improvement. That's what he said. My guy's like, please get me out of Houston. <laughs> Just buy me out at this point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Luka takes over in the third quarter. Then the Mavericks finally go on this run. It, fe- it finally felt like, okay, there's some real stuff happening. The Mavericks are are really coming back. They got it to within one a couple times. Uh, scored 39 points in the third quarter. Uh, and then Tim Hardaway Jr., he had eight points in the third quarter too, but he twisted his ankle on Garuba's foot. It's like... Can Usman Garuba just get out of the Mavs' way? Like, really? <laughs> this guy, like, he annoys the mess out of Luka. Then he's, his foot is in the way of Tim Hardaway Jr. Twists his ankle. Um, yeah. He ended up sta- He ended up going to the bench, didn't didn't uh, leave the game, and then uh, came back a little bit later. So uh, the Mavericks started the fourth quarter with, we got some pins in minutes. We got more than a hype man minutes where he hit a big three. He almost yammed on the entire I say, Rockets. I don't even care about the three. <laughs> it was the, the, the dunk attempt. If he would have thrown that down, I would have like, I would have wrote him tonight and said, "You gotta come back on the pod." Yeah, and start about. let's just get a breakdown, like frame for frame, on that dunk attempt. Like, what were you thinking? The whole thing, he almost, he almost got it to go. No foul either. The fouls in this game. I did he hit Jerry West with the dunk? <laughs> <laughs> no, it felt like the Rockets threw him into Jerry West. 
Yeah, that's kind of how it is, though, for like bench players. Like they don't get the benefit of the whistle very much. No, they don't. But it didn't feel like anybody was getting the benefit of a whistle in this game at times. It's like, okay, well, what are, are you? You're calling that, but you're not calling this. Uh, the Rockets got called for 28 fouls. The Mavs got called for 19. The Mavs took 34 free throws, and the Rockets took 29. So it's like, okay, the difference in fouls and the difference in free throws. Just like that, that ratio didn't really work out in this game. What's the ratio on rebounds? Uh. Uh, let's see. The, the Rockets had 46 and the Mavs had 41. So is 46 is bigger than 41, meaning that the, oh, the Mavs lost the rebound Dang. battle and still won the game. Mavs still won. Wow. <laughs> I just want to check just, on just, that real This quick. is Isaac right now. He's just pushing the agenda. He's just pushing the agenda. He's pushing the Once again, rebounds matter. It just doesn't always determine the game as like the biggest X factor. I may that's have to get that. That's my a, only point. I may have to get that as a drop soon. Um, <laughs> Then you had then you had the the Christian Wood clutch couple of moments in the fourth quarter that one sequence it, it felt like it really turned the momentum of the game where Christian Wood hits the the four point play on the three then gets the block on Jalen Green and that those back to back possessions um, Luca gets fouled hits two free throws and then Jason Kidd used the timeout three minutes nineteen seconds left he used the timeout it was a use it or lose it where you have you can you can only take two timeouts into the last what two minutes or three minutes. Yeah. And so he decides to do an offense defense substitution, something that I've been wanting him to do all season is like, okay, why in defensive situations are we leaving Luca and Tim Hardaway in these situations? And he decided to take them both out or take Wood and, and Luca out. And then when, you know, on the other side of the timeout, he put him back in. It worked. It was one of those moments where you're like, okay, that was, that was smart play. Two minutes and 45 seconds left. Tim Hardaway Jr. is the drive and the floater, puts him up 107 to 104. And then that I, like that was when the Mavericks basically took the lead. And then this last play is what I really want to talk about. Luca, about what, 20, 30 seconds left. Or Luca, the it, with 40 seconds left, takes a shot, misses b- by a lot. Like he, he, you could just tell he had no legs under him. The shot just wasn't, was real that short. Was contested. Real too, short, right? contested too. Yeah. Exactly. The next possession, the Mavericks get the ball back. Luca gives it up to Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie isos on Jabari Smith, pulls up, hits the shot, hits the mid-range shot. The Mavericks win 109 to 106. That play right there I felt was really important because Luka identified, all right, I carried us to this point. I don't have any legs. Let me give the ball up to Dinwiddie. And he just like stood out by the like half court line and uh, yeah. let him play four on four basically in that, in that moment. Uh, and it totally worked for the Mavericks. Dinwiddie came up really big and they won the game. That's the cool thing about Dinwiddie is, you know, he's not at the level – He's not at the level as a, as like the second star. You know, I wouldn't say him or Christian Woods like the the level of like a second star that we're all like waiting for Luca to get right. alongside, like a Jalen Brown or something like that. Um, but we at least have somebody in Dinwiddie that is one consistent and also another clutch option. Because I think I feel comfortable enough now to where like if if Luca goes out of let's say Luca twists his ankle a little bit at the end of a game, and it's just you know, non Luca players in there. I'm still, I'm still walking into that kind of weirdly confident in Dinwiddie taking the last shot, just because I feel like we've had enough proof from him tonight was another case for that. He said some free throws before we had the Boston Brooklyn game. We have, we've had multiple games where he's had some clutch moments that I'm like, all right, like you might not be second, you know, perennial all-star next to Luca, but you're at least a, a second clutch option for the Mavs. And that that's really good for them. And, you know, get to the line or, you know, hit a three. His three-point shooting has been incredible as a Maverick, yeah. which has been kind of a, a wild thing. He was only one for five in this game. But, uh, but yeah, hit the shot when it mattered. Hit the mid-range shot. He can get his own shot, too, which is important. And the Mavericks get that win because of that that final shot, I think, um, for, the, for, uh, for some part. Coming up, let's get into the rest of this game. Who else stood out to us? What do we think about this Rockets team? Uh, we saw some Kemba minutes. We saw some McKinley Wright minutes. What is Jason Kidd trying to do with this rotation? Mm. When will some of these injured guys come back? Let's talk about some of all that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. It's the best place to check out the odds and lines inside and outside of sports right now. They have an interesting one. Will LeBron James break the all-time NBA points record on a two-point shot, a free throw, or a three-point shot? What do you think is the favorite right there? Is there an option for I don't care? Um, I would do. Uh, you d- stop it, stop it. You don't care the the all time no. points record at all. I mean, cool. The most it'll points be, ever. Cool, yeah, it'll be a cool moment. 
I mean, I'm not like sell. I'm not gonna like lead the pod with it. This this man is such a LeBron curmudgeon that he doesn't even so care about that one, of all, on one of the all vacation. One of the all time one of the all time moments in sports. Uh, <laughs> two point shot is minus two eighty five. Free throw is plus three twenty five. Three point shot is plus five fifty. Uh, plus five fifty. So if you want some extra skin in the game on that game, whenever that ends up being this season, uh, you can go check it out on Bet Online. They have all kinds of other stuff too. They have um, Rookie of the Year right now. They did have MVP. Luca was number one in MVP. It's not on the site right now, but they'll have that back. Paolo Bencaro, the favorite for Rookie of the Year. Go check it out. It's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Isaac Harris, let's keep talking about this Dallas Mavericks game. We talked about Spencer Dinwiddie stepping up in that final moment. Talked about Christian Wood having some clutch moments. Tim Hardaway Jr., I thought, also was kind of kept him in the game with his shooting. He could get a three-point shot, an open three-point shot, whenever he wanted in this game. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, you said open. I was going to say, he can get a three-point shot whenever he wants in any game because he's going to take it. <laughs> I mean, and you can almost tell every single time Tim's going to take a three, you you can almost like, like you can, if we're sitting beside each other, I guess yeah, he's taking it. <laughs> and it's like, because he starts lining everything up and he's just going to shoot it in somebody's face. But no, that I actually got a little worried when he twisted his ankle, yeah. you know, he left. Cause it's like, all right, we, we just, we need bodies and we, we need him out there scoring the basketball. So uh, it was good that he can come back in the game. Everything looks good for him moving forward. He has 21 points, three boards and assist. Um, he had a steal too. He played 37 minutes for the Mavericks. He hits five threes. Like it, he, they really, really need his shooting. And it seems like at times the Mavs go as Tim Hardaway Jr. goes, and that's that's sort of been the case the last couple of years. He just adds when when he gets hot, that he adds so much to this team as far as a like I don't know if it's ceiling raiser. I guess it's ceiling raiser because uh, yeah, it's, it's like, like unconscious when he can hit when he can hit some of these threes, and it just caps off these huge plays and it deflates the other team and all that yeah can can i do you have anything else about this game i was gonna ask some bigger picture nope. um so now that you know we've seen the starting you know lineup over the past handful of games obviously still mi missing dorian still missing maxi maxi's you know gonna be out most of the year probably um still missing josh green so factoring the injuries and factoring in the last seven games that they've won so we all know they've won seven games in a row, the longest winning streak since the 2011 championship season, which is crazy to think about that. Longest winning streak in Luka's uh, career in the hey. NBA so far. Now, not to deflate the old hype around the seven games because it, it is impressive. Three of those games are against the Rockets, another game against the Spurs, Timberwolves, uh, the Knicks without Brunson and R.J. Barrett, and the Lakers. Lakers without Anthony Davis. So... But so you take all of that and say, all right, you've won seven in a row. You can kind of poke some holes in it. Now you get Celtics, Pelicans, Thunder, and then the Clippers right after that. Just looking at the next four, you get three of those teams are pretty dang good teams. Are you riding a high right now out of those seven games and saying, all right, there's one angle you can look at and say, we, we've won these seven games. I don't care who they're against. We've won seven and we've missed three key players in the rotation and we still won seven games. Are you looking at it saying, all right, we're wounded. We've barely gotten by because luca has been an all-time great, and some of those were even one possession crazy endings <laughs> to win games, and now we have a tough stretch coming up. How should Mavs fans be right now? How should they be, or how should, how do I feel personally? Because <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, I'm not about to tell somebody how they should feel about it, but I, I, I do think that you look at it and say, okay, they took care of business. You got to at least feel good that they took care of business. Even the way that it was, Luka going crazy, the the clutch games, like the, the last, the one possession games they won, they still got wins, right? They still racked up enough wins. Now the Mavericks are, you know, in sole possession, one game ahead of the Clippers for fourth place in the West. So you're glad that they piled up some of those wins. And Christian Wood said something interesting after the game when he said, you know, he's like, I played trash on defense. But this was a, these some of these games were games that the Mavericks were not winning at the beginning of the season. You know, everybody healthy or not, right? Like th these, some of these games, like the Mavericks would lose. They would they would come down in yeah. late games, and a team would be ba a bad team would come in, or a team missing a star, and then they would come in and lose these games. And now they're finding ways to win these games, which is a definite positive. And so you take that and you say, okay, feeling good about them racking up some wins, banking some wins, as some people say. But now is the test. The other thing, though, we haven't really talked about this too much. I I've tweeted about it, but we haven't talked about it. The Mavericks have the best record in the West 
uh, tied with the Grizzlies now because it changes every day with uh, record with against teams above 500. So like the other team that you're playing, their record is above 500. The Mavericks are 12 and eight this season. And like not, not many teams in the NBA have 12 wins against teams above 500 this year. Like you look at even some of the, uh, like some of the, the other teams in the West, like the Pelicans are 11 and nine. Now nuggets are 11 and seven. The, the Clippers are five and 12 against teams above 500. So you're like, all right, the Suns are 11 and 11. Like I would much rather be in this situation where, okay, the Mavericks have played these good teams well <laughs> in the past and they've won some of these games. It's just been these take care of business games. They haven't take care, taken care of business with. And if they split these upcoming four games, two to two, I feel, I feel like you feel fine about that. Yeah, I think you feel fine about it. I, I think you can learn a little bit. Like if you go into these next games and let's say, let's say you go, I'm just saying those three games, Boston, New Orleans, and Clippers. Um, the Clippers. Thunder game. and then Clippers. Yeah, let's just look at those three games against those three really good teams. What if you go in there and you, you go three and zero against those teams? And you're like, all right, mm-hmm. even without even without Dorian and Josh, and you know, obviously include Maxi, but it's like, dang, like we don't even have our best you know perimeter defenders, and we're like, you're feeling pretty good. But what if you go in those games and saying and and you get beat by like 15 plus against all three of those games? Are you walking out of it saying, all right, well we're just missing Dorian and Josh, or are you walking out of saying, yeah, we're still not on that level yet? This is a question that I think answer that like you can ask about this entire Mavericks season, right? Last season, the Mavericks went into their run and like even with Jalen Brunson, even with Dinwood, even after the Din- the Dinwiddie Porzingis trade, the Mavericks is this the stretch that defines the Mavericks? The, season? the Mavericks as a franchise still thought, all right, we're still a move away, like a big move away, where you bring in some kind of second star next to Luca. They still thought that, and so you know even and then they go on the run. They still even thought that you know they were like. I don't know. We don't want to just sign Jalen Brunson to this max deal because what if blah blah blah? He is, this is not a perfect team around Luca. Let's let's make sure we find the the perfect guy. And you're like, okay, even they didn't believe in that team that they were like <laughs> this great team that had a chance to win. So I feel like even if they go three and zero, it's not going to change what this Mavericks team is. It's a fundamentally flawed team where there still has to be somebody next to Luca to be that star and. I don't think it's Christian Wood. We don't think it's Dinwiddie, right? Those guys are have, have been good this year and have they've been good, they yeah. Have provided great great stuff. Uh, they'd be really really good as like the third option. You know, if those if Dinwiddie was the guard off the bench like he was last year, Christian Wood was either off the bench or starting as like your third option, a guy that can just finish a bunch of plays for two playmakers on the court. That would be amazing. Like that would be just one of the like a perfect scenario, but. Right now, they're still a flawed team. So even if, like, no matter what happens in the wins or losses, I feel like you yeah. still know that they're a flawed team. Yeah, that's why I'm so, I'm you know, fascinated that, you know, we're past the new year now. So now we get this stretch here for, what, five weeks until, you know, <laughs> trade deadline, six yeah. weeks maybe at that. And uh, this is one of the more fun parts of the season for us to cover on this pod as you guys have been listening to this. Y'all know that anytime something big happens, trades, whatever, we, we'll do emergency pods and all of that. But I do think that they're going to be active, though. And um, sure. But this next stretch of games, though, will I think it'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, that first one against Boston, man, it would be really good for the vibes and everything about this team. If they could, you know, Boston come to town and they just, you know, they beat Boston, they beat Tatum and those guys, you know, arguably the best team in the league. That would give a... You know, for the, some people that are doubting the winning streak a little bit, that would give it a little validation of, ooh, that that winning streak is you know means a little bit more. So I'm excited for that. And this Boston team is not like unbeatable either. They've they've had a recent stretch where they lost to the Warriors, the Clippers, the Magic twice, the Pacers, and then the other night they got beat by Denver, pretty good. And so that's in the last what their last nine, ten games or so they had all those losses. So it, it, this is not an unbeatable team at this point. They have their flaws too. And so, yeah, that'll be a really big game. I think we'll learn a lot from that game. I'm excited to see what it comes to, uh, what Christian Wood does in that game. Like, who does Christian Wood guard? Who is he, you know, playing against? How does he play against Robert, Robert Williams? That's all going to be really, really interesting. Um, and so, yeah, we'll have a post game for you on that every single post game. We'll have a podcast for you tomorrow where we'll talk more about. Maybe we'll look at. We're, we're five weeks away from the trade deadline. Ooh. We're getting, we're, getting, we're getting close here. So maybe we'll talk about the Mavs options or what's on the table for the Mavs. But, yeah, we'll talk about all that in the next week or so. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.